Here we have a Play-Doh model of a long bone during prenatal development. At the moment, it hasn't gone through endochondral ossification, so it's composed of hyaline cartilage. Real quick, simple parts of the bone include the two epiphyses, which are these two here, and these are the ends of the bone. And we also have a diaphysis, which is going to be the shaft or the middle part of the bone. Something to keep in mind for later down the road is what we call a metaphysis, which are going to be the two parts in between the epiphyses and the diaphysis. This whole structure of hyaline cartilage has an outer layer called a perichondrium. Peri meaning outer, chondri meaning cartilage. In this outer layer that goes around the bone structure, we have mesenchymal cells within the perichondrium. The mesenchymal cells within the perichondrium begin to differentiate into osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are responsible for building up bone. They begin to make what is a structure called a bone collar that will begin to form around the diaphysis. The perichondrium is now called the periosteum. Making up the hyaline cartilage are chondrocytes. Sites meaning cells and chondro is cartilage once again. These cells each have a home inside something called a lacunae. A lacunae is like a hollowed out structure that act as a home for the chondrocytes. The cell lacunae structure is represented in green. Once the bone collar is formed, however, it acts as a wall and cuts off all nutrients to these cells. As the chondrocytes begin to die, they harden or calcify. Body responds to this by trying to get them nutrients and sends in blood vessels to supply that. However, as the blood vessels penetrate the bone collar, they also grab onto osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoclasts begin to do their work by removing all of the calcified chondrocytes. And osteoblasts begin to do their work by building up bone in the center of the diaphysis, making it bigger and bigger. This is composed of spongy bone and can be referred to as a primary ossification center. As the primary ossification center continues to grow, it expands towards the epiphyses. This is called interstitial growth. As it continues, bone is formed towards the outer sides of the diaphysis and joined with the bone collar. This is composed of compact bone which we will get into more later. There's a bit of remodeling done as you can see which hollows out the inside of the primary ossification center and creates something called a medullary cavity. At the same time that all of this is occurring, blood vessels penetrate the end of the bone, the epiphyses, and a secondary ossification center is formed. Osteoblasts continue to build new bone until the only cartilage that is left is shown in yellow. The two epiphyseal ends of the bone, as well as the medullary cavity, form into spongy bone. I have put holes in them to signify that spongy bone is far more porous than compact. When all is said and done, the only two places you will find any cartilage are on the ends of the epiphyses and at the metaphyses. The cartilage at the end of the epiphyses are called articular cartilage. This prevents any bone-to-bone -bone contact in the body, which can cause pain and other unwanted things. The cartilage found in the metaphyses is called epiphyseal cartilage, or growth plate. This is important because it allows for interstitial growth, or growth in length, and once a child is mature, they will actually go away.